Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. Here's the easiest, simplest thing in the world. As part of your pre-shot routine, you have an idea or a trigger to smile. I'm going to smile 18 times today. That's my main goal. All sports psychologists talk about process goals. Have ones that contribute to your emotional framework for the day. Emotions are there for a reason. Your unconscious mind lets you know whether or not you are or are not living to your values and your beliefs. So if your value out there for playing golf is to score only, then if you don't, you're going to get difficult emotions. What if you start the round with my goal, my belief, my value right now is to enjoy the heck out of myself. You're out there to enjoy the sun. You're out there to enjoy the grass, the feel of a crisp stroke coming right off the center of a five iron. If you're out there in the course thinking that, come on, can you just see how your game is going to be better? With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. This week's member-only episode is a conversation with Craig Sigal of Break80Golf.com. Craig's site boldly proclaims to provide lower golf scores for the player who just doesn't have much time to practice. As we get into winter, I thought that may be a valid offer. There are a number of quotes from various instructors and PGA Tour winners who confirm his contention. Welcome to Golf Smarter for members only, Craig. Hi, Fred. It's (laughs) fabulous to be here. I'm excited. (laughs) Sounds like you're standing on top of a mountain (laughs) and the wind is blowing in your face. I feel like I'm on top of a mountain this morning. Why? Why? It's a beautiful day. It's up in Seattle. The sun is shining. I'm going golfing with my kid this week. Oh, wow. Life is great. Yeah, life is great. And and you just said that you're in Seattle and the sun is shining. You better get outside quickly. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I am so intrigued by your website, uh, break80golf.com, uh, because I love the idea that you, you profess that, that uh, all golfers can break 80 with the tools that they have and not have to spend a tremendous amount of time on training aids or coaches or practice. Absolutely. It is. There's so many little things that we can do. I mean, here's a perfect example. Golfers don't stretch. I mean, this is simple, but they don't do it. If you were just to get your body ready, you could do this in the car, in the passenger seat, on your way to the course, and that can save you a stroke. Instead, what do we do? We hit eight putts in a row from the same spot on the putting green just before round. When do you have a chance to hit eight putts from the same spot and tell your mind you have seven do-overs? Doesn't happen. This is what I'm about. Let's get efficient and let's go for score. Yeah. Um, You know, it's interesting. I played with a guy recently and he was telling me about the different surgeries that he's had on his shoulders and his arms and that how limited his range of motion is. So I said, well, do you stretch in the morning or do you do anything? And he went, yeah, I go when I wake up and I was like, that's it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Um, it's very simple. You're right. Um, Stretching before and Eight putts from the same spot. You're absolutely right. I've seen it time and time again. Um, and there's a hundred of those kind of little tips that I that I teach. A hundred of them. They're so easy. They take no time, very little effort, and they reduce your score. Bottom line. Bottom line. I'm a bottom line guy. I used to work for FedEx Express. <laughs> I was a manager, and it was get it done yesterday, get it done fast and get it done efficiently. And that's the way I approach uh, my golf teaching. So you are a golf instructor? I'm not a pro. No, Uh, I'm a mental toughness trainer. Tell me more what that means. That means I have found the 80-20 or the Pareto principle, which means 80% efficiency with 20% effort or 20% of the people get 80% of the money. Uh, You might have heard that before. Sure. 90% 90% rule, same kind of thing. I, I, I take everything that way. And I found as a mental toughness trainer that the way to get there is through emotional mastery. And that's the 80-20. That's the efficient way. If you can eliminate 
having anger, frustration, or fear get in your way, your perfect swing is just going to naturally come out. Now, there's still a hundred other nice little fun tips that I give, uh, but that's the bulk of what I do. So let's talk about breaking 80 without practice. Yes. Let, let's let's go there because I think that um, it, it would be nice to know that it can be done, yes. but it's it's not about, uh, well, it's it's more about what you have in, in, not in your bag, but in your head, um, that brings it there and that can get you there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when I say practice, I mean, uh, going down to the course or the range and hitting tons of balls or uh, spending hours on the, on the practice screen. And I have nothing against it. If you can get that done, great. But most people, uh, that I work with are too busy. They have obligations. They work and they just want to play. So when I say practice, I also mean uh, er- everything that official practice. I'm not against uh, teach. And in fact, I do teach a lot of little tips that you can do at home, sitting on your couch, in your backyard. For instance, how many times w- will you watch somebody jab at a putt? Hmm. I-, I mean, it's the most common thing you'll see. And how you can eliminate that for the rest of your life on your carpet, in your living room, during commercials, while you watch your favorite show, by just isolating, holding your finish. Hold your finish on every single putt. Don't mat- does not matter whether the ball goes in the hole or not. Just hold your finish and you will create the smoothest putt on the planet. Simple. Oh, j- just holding it a- after, after you hit it, Not, I mean... You got to follow through, obviously, but just wait there. Hold, stay, yes. pause. Right, Annika Sorenstam, Annika Sorenstam, uh, countless others, but she's one of my favorites because she would, uh, when she was playing big time, she would stroke fifty foot putts, huge putts, and she would still be looking at the spot on the ground where the ball was, while the ball's long past her eyesight, and she would listen for the ball in the cup. Gary Player taught this many years ago. You do that, that's the 80-20 of putting. You will have a smooth stroke. Ten times more efficient than hitting ten balls in a row right before the round from the same spot on the little practice screen. It is so hard to not look towards the cup because... You know, you want to turn your head immediately to see where's it going, where's it going. But you're saying just hold your head still and listen. And practice that. Uh, I don't even like to use the word practice, but I guess we have to. Well, it, do you prefer in a your, different word? <laughs> no, we have to use it. Okay. But do it on your carpet, before, you know, just for fun and games. Make it a make it a interesting little uh, routine that you do every night when you come home from work. And then you don't have to think about it out on the golf course anymore. It just happens because you've ingrained it. Yeah, and it's amazing that you use uh, Annika as an example because when I watch her swing, take a full swing on the golf course um, or with her clubs, it looks as if she picks up her head way before she hits the ball, doesn't it? I, you know, this has been a, quite a controversy. I've been very interested. One of my best buddies – uh, teaches that uh, you got to let your head swing, you got to let it go, and then others. I have pictures on my website of Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods swinging, and their head is still down looking at the spot well after the ball's been struck. Mm-hmm. So I think we're mostly talking about how fast can your high speed photography catch it <laughs> faster than our, than our eyes. There's a lot of illusion and perception going on in golf instruction. And you can't always take what great golfers say verbatim because they don't always know what they're doing. It's just how they feel and how they're choosing to use words to teach it. So buyer beware on golf instruction. (laughs) You know, so you're, you're suggesting that with uh, your training and the the tips that you provide on your website of break 80 golf.com that you can knock two, three strokes off per round. Well, quickly, not, it could be more than that. I, I have loads of testimonials, dozens. I stopped posting them up on my website a couple of years ago. Uh, but I have folks who have gone from 100 to 80. Really? I, I've had folks, uh, I have pros on there. So, wow, I'm learning from you. I had no idea. And it's uh, the bulk of it is, is mental. But there's, like I said, so many little t- Here's a, Here's another tip. I Please. just have these tips all over the place golf balls 
Most golfers want to go play the Pro V1s and the $5 golf balls. Most golfers should be playing the rock balls. I'm a big at the, the hard balls that don't spin that much. Think, check this out. I, I, I shoot in the 70s all the time. I got my handicap down to a five, and I still play the distance or two-piece balls. Why? Because they have less spin. What is the goal out there on the course? It is to, for us uh, amateurs, it's to hit the ball straight. We, okay, yes, sometimes we play courses where we need to have some stop on the green, but most of us, most of the time, our bigger problem is keeping the darn thing in play and no out of bounds. How many times you get to the, the 19th hole and you go, oh, oh, if I would have only not doubled the 12th or, the, or had that triple <laughs> because I hit it out of bounds. The game for us is not to shoot for birdies all day. It's not to have a beautiful backspin. The game is to eliminate your balloon scores. Mm -hmm. Birdies and pars just happen because you're having fun, mm -hmm. you're consistent, mm -hmm. and you don't make huge mistakes. That's it. Yeah. And, yeah. and the balls that spin more, spin more left and spin more right and go out of bounds more. You want the ones that are more likely to stay straight and roll the darn ball up. How many golfers, are, they, they're so interested in having these pretty chip shots from 50 yards out or that flop and stop when they should be running it up there with a five iron when it's wide open. The chances of you uh, chunking it are a hundredfold. Uh, the problem is most of us golfers, we watch TV, we get this instruction from these top pros, and we think we need to emulate it. Well, we play a different game than the pros. I'm sorry to say that. Yes, I know it bursts some of your bubbles out there, but all I care about is scoring. and All I care about is helping my clients score lower. And when we're talking low scores, we're not talking necessarily just going from 100 to 90. I mean, I use this stuff every day when I'm out there on the course. And I'm still a single digit handicapper. Wow. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would love to go from 100 to 90. But, right. But, but, you know, if you watch a golf tournament, you see that the, even the pros, they can have a 20 stroke range over two, two days, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. we have to, that's hard for us to accept. It you know, is. We think is. that, you know, hey, I've been playing this sport long enough. I'm just going to get better every time out. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? There's a lot of brainwashing going on in the golf industry. No, come on. You don't just leave that one out there. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you know, all right. When you look at people's motives, they, it always comes down. You can almost always follow money trail. And the golf industry is no different than any other industry. They're in business to stay in business, to sell clubs, to get you to come down the range. Hit. Did you know that range balls is one of the biggest money makers for golf courses? Huh? Hitting, hitting range balls. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I don't begrudge those folks, you know, putting out the magazines and, and all that great stuff. And, you know, I sell golf products, too. I don't. But the fact is they, they're they dependent on you coming back over and over and over, spending more money every single year. And therefore, they're going to do everything they can to teach you that your game is no good unless you buy the latest, greatest clubs this year mm -hmm. or that you come back and take 100 more lessons from me or hit a thousand more golf balls, all the things that cost money. And that bothers me. And everything uh, with regard to what goes on on the TV, which, in, which is in the advertisements, is designed to get you to spend money where, yes, I sell something, but I'm designed to get you to lower your score. I have so many places I want to go. You talked <laughs> about blow up holes before, and it's not so much, you know, to avoiding blow up holes. It would be a nice thing to have these big num you know, big number holes out of our lives. Yes. But it's the recovery process. It's right. It's not having two or three of them in a row or five of them in a round. Exactly. Um, how would you advise us to, to once you have a blow up hole to get back to where your game is, whatever that is. Well, it sounds like you're asking me, how do you deal with the emotions that come from a blow up hole? Is that right? Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to ask. Because Thank that's the, yeah, that. that's the interference. I mean, we're so angry, disappointed, frustrated at what just happened that it screws up our next hole. 
Well, here's the short, quick answer. When you're angry, when you're frustrated, and this is my specialty in dealing with emotions, go ahead and be in that. Do not fight it. Do not strug- struggle with it. Do not say, I shouldn't be angry. It's the resistance to those difficult emotions that makes them worse. Uh-huh. Here's my favorite saying, and this is on the bottom of all my emails for everything I do. It's an and world, A-N-D. And what this means is I can be angry and I can still rip this one down the middle. I can be frustrated and I can sink this putt. See, we have this old, again, brainwashing or belief system that says, uh, if I feel bad, and it's kind of just in the back of our mind, then I can't perform. And world allows you to be nervous and do it. I and everything. I tell my clients, practice using the word and instead of but throughout your life to to put this into your entire being. So in the moment, yes, you're feeling angry. You just missed a crucial putt. Grab, get your ball, start walking to the next tee. Allow yourself to be in that anger and just go, okay, that's fine. I'm angry. That's interesting. That's curious. You're not judging it. You're just observing it. You're being in it. And go ahead and get your learning. What do I, what did I need to learn from that? And that will allow your unconscious mind to let go of the flood of chemicals that are cascading throughout your body, causing that feeling, the tension, anxiety, nervousness, or stress that affects the fine motor muscles in our golf swing. And then just go up there with it's an and world. I'm going to use Annika again. I love, she has so many great stories, but remember when she played in the colonial uh, against the men a few years back yeah. and everybody was against her, VJ and some of these guys are saying, ah, oh, she's taking one of the guys places. This isn't right. Blah, blah, blah. Well, Annika said later that she, that was the most nervous she had ever been in her entire life. Now this is a woman who's, you know, won majors and is just about won everything on the entire planet with respect to golf. And there she is with the whole women's movement on her shoulders there at the first tee of the colonial, shaking like a leaf. And what does she do? She rips it right down the middle. You can perform and be nervous. That's what I'd like golfers to take away today. That's good because I know that ah, I played with a friend recently and I had a really good round that day. Um, and I made a huge mistake. I, I looked at my scorecard after number 17. That was, that was a mistake. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I double bogeyed and shot an 80. But, yeah. um, but the, my friend, it was after the second hole. Uh, he was convinced that he was going to have an awful round that day. It just wasn't, you know, he had a good drive off the first tee and then everything went to, went to the, uh, went, was terrible after that. And, yes. and he, um, he just kept verbalizing it that this is not going to be my day. This is going to be awful. Oh, I, I'm just terrible. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, and he was yelling at himself and, and just want to say, dude, we're only on the third hole. Right. We've got hours and many, many, many shots left. Let it go. Right. But he couldn't. Right. The brain realizes <laughs> what you tend to think. Uh, literally, the body will respond. If you're saying uh, if you're saying those things, isn't it almost comical to, to listen to somebody do that? You, you know, darn well, you're listening. To, you're you're going to manifest what you're talking about because you're talking about it and because they're in high emotion. You have opened up the gateway to the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is going, really? We stink? We suck? We're going to have a bad day? Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Emotion opens up that gateway. There's normally a block between your conscious and unconscious mind. Anytime you feel emotion, you are very suggestible to whatever it is you're thinking or saying to yourself. That's why self-talk is so important, but especially when you're angry. That's why when I said earlier... Uh, if you're frustrated, angry, you just made a mistake. You you just observe it. You examine it. Do not fight. It's go. Huh, that's funny. <laughs> wow, I'm angry. Well, I'm going to be in anger right now. What, what's that like? Well, my hands are tightening up. I feel like punching something. <laughs> that's cool. I'm going to just be in anger. And it's an and world. And what about these people who have these anger issues with throwing clubs and screaming at themselves and pounding the club into the ground and... Uh, how how do we let them know that that's not necessary and that they're embarrassing themselves? 
Well, it's kind of too or late. Or do we even get involved? I yeah. mean, should we just stay away from them? <laughs> when I run into those kind of people on the course, it's a little bit late for uh, for me to do my magic. But what I teach my clients uh, is it's you ha- it's all about a misdirected focus. You see, they have put their entire universe for for that moment on how they score. What you want to do when you go out to the golf course. You go ahead and have uh, an idea of what you want to score, your goal for the day or your goal for this season. That's fine. And then you put it in the back of your mind and you forget it. Then you get out on the course and you just focus on why it is I'm here. How many times you, uh, Fred, how many times you see golfers out there with these frowns and, and they're all, they spend the whole time. Uh, are we out there to have fun? Are we out there to grind ourselves in the dirt? I, you have to go out with an outcome in mind as you start and as you go. And the best way to make this happen automatically is to think about it before you ever get to the course. This is how, I mean, this is so easy, and yet golfers won't do it. I'll, I'll go out there and say, what did, here's the easiest, simplest thing in the world. From now on, go out on the course, and as part of your pre-shot routine, you have uh, an idea or a trigger to smile. Hmm. Smile! I'm going to smile 18 times today. That's my main goal. All sports psychologists talk about process goals. Have ones that contribute to your emotional framework for the day. Most golfers and most people in general, they're just like victims of their emotions. And I'm saying, listen, it is a vehicle. Emotions are there for a reason. By the way, any idea why we get emotions? Want to hazard a guess? Hardly anybody answers this, right? I'm, I'm not even going to try. Ah, I'll, be, I'll be part of the hardly anybody. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Emotions are there. Uh, your unconscious mind lets you know whether or not you are or are not living to your values and your beliefs. So if your value out there for playing golf is to score only, it's, it's to, while you're out there, I must score good. Then if you don't, you're going to get difficult emotions. If you have a bad hole, you're going to get anger. What if you start the round with my goal, my belief, my value right now is to enjoy the heck out of myself and count up how many times I do my pre-shot routine. You're not going to get difficult emotions if that's your focus when you miss because you're out there to enjoy the sun. You're out there to enjoy the grass, the feel of a crisp stroke coming right off the center of a five iron and the flight of the ball. Arnold Palmer talked a lot about a beautiful drive with a slight little draw, just how gorgeous that is. And he can, he never got, he never got tired of it. Just it's artistry. If you're out there in the course thinking that, come on, can you just see how your game is going to be better? That's how you get yourself at the gateway to the zone. That's how people just slip into it just through, just through consistency and enjoying themselves, you want to have that your idea on the course is to master the sport, master every little facet of it, give your conscious mind plenty to do with that regard, and then allow your emotions to respond to, I wonder how well I can enjoy today's round, instead of I wonder how I'm going to score in this hole. See how, don't let, don't let your old habits just take, take, take you away. Uh, the, most people are victims of, of that. They think emotions are something that's being done to them. No, it's something you do. And that's the biggest thing I want to get across. When we go to practice, we're going to work on our game. But when it's time to um, get to the course, you're going to play golf. That's right. This is probably the biggest problem in golf right now. Pro, amateur alike. Bringing your range game to the course, right? Right, right. But you're still, the word play comes in. I'm going to go play golf. I'm not going to go work golf. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. I totally missed that. Way to go, Fred. (laughs) That is fabulous. Uh, Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Let's talk about yips. Yes. So many people are convinced that the yips are their club's fault or that um, <laughs> or their, or their head or something. No, I mean, physical motion of their head or things right. like that, that they, they're convinced on why they have the yips. And I've only what I've witnessed in yips and thank goodness so far, I've not experienced it. Yay. But it seems like a mental thing to me. 
It is 100% mental, Fred. I've worked with this in my office with uh, golfers in person. Guys get the yips. They want to go hire an instructor to get rid of their yips on the course. Oh, when I'm in the bunker, I always, you know, or on the, especially on the green or around yep. the green. Yeah, yep. It, it comes from, once again, misdirected focus and a buildup of repressed emotions from the golf from the from your golf game here's the deal we have a subconscious or unconscious mind they're interchangeable those words and that part of you does not care about your golf game all it cares about is your health and keeping you alive it does not care how well you do now if we can learn to golf with that part of us oh my gosh pure consistency but it's not going to do this naturally. You have This is what I'm about is teaching people how to golf with their unconscious mind, their automatic process, that part of us that beats our heart 24 hours a day and the entire time you're alive. That's the seed of consistency. Now, <laughs> uh, what was the original question? Yeah, right. You know, it's so interesting because uh, we'll share this with the audience. <laughs> yeah, well, the yips, but I, I'm just, we're obviously, we're doing this conversation on Skype and I'm actually looking at Craig. He's not looking at me, but I'm watching him and he really just, his face at that moment was like, where am I? <laughs> Where'd I go? All of a sudden, I, I can we were do talking this real easy. Yips. Yeah, I can yeah. get off track. Okay, so the yips. Yes. Uh, bottom line is your your subconscious mind does not like the fact that you've put a ton of pressure, tension, nervousness, stress. It all comes down to stress mm-hmm. on you for golfing. And literally what it does, it's trying to stop you from golfing. It's injecting a problem into your golf game to get you to stop. Mm. And guess what? It's successful with some people. Oh, yeah. It's, and, it, and it's at, self-perpetuating, right? That's right. So literally at the moment of uh, about to take that putt, it's, it's messing with you. It wants to inject a pro- because you're just this stress case. You've put so much importance on whether or not you make putts. It says, you know, what? I'm tired of you messing with my body here. You know, I'm just going to stop you from putting. I, I work with mental blocks with golfers and other athletes, and it's quite interesting. The subconscious mind will and will do. I mean, I've had golfers. I had a golfer once who could not. He was a great. He came to me. I said, so what's wrong with your game? He says nothing. It's perfect. What, what, where do you lose your strokes? He says, well, whenever I get up to hit a ball and I can see my shadow, I freak. He had to give up the game. Whoa. It's because he was such a stress case. Wow. And he had, and a lot of people say, well, I'm no stress case. Golf makes me uh, more relaxed. I enjoy it. Really? I, I would uh, tend to doubt that. Count how many times you smile and laugh out there. How many times you tell yourself, I have to have this. You put stress on your body. Your unconscious mind's job is to keep you alive. It can't do that if you're stressed. This is the number one thing. You can relate just about any health issue and most mental blocks, too. Your unconscious mind wants to de-stress you. And if you're putting a ton on yourself because you have to get a certain score, pressing, pressuring yourself, then it's going to react in one way or another. Yeah, I, I when I when I first started playing, I found that I had uh, a tough time. That when I would step up to a shot, if my feet were not flat on the ground, meaning there was a divot, there was a hole, there was yeah. an indentation in the ground, I would. I would, it would freak me out. I, I would get uh, very upset about it, but I wouldn't step away from it. Right. And, and I, you know, I would still stay with the shot, even if I'm just teeing it up so where I have the opportunity to go, you know what, this is not a good spot for me. Let me pull the ball up and put it in another spot. And, you know, I mean, I don't play competitively. So if I tap the ball three inches aside so I can move my feet, then sometimes I'll do it. I know that's not golf and I'm sorry, but, <laughs> you know, but, but there's these things um, where, you know, and I got past it. I mean, it's like, come on, just start. Once I start losing focus and being in the moment, and I start concentrating on, oh my God, I'm in the hole. I'm not going to be able to hit the ball. I always screw it up when I'm doing that. That just kills it, right? Yep. Everything goes that, wrong from there. Absolutely. And again, it's like, see, I was right. So, right. what I like to advocate um, on things like that is what I call a mental mulligan, beautiful, which doesn't count on your scorecard. Right. Right. If if you're love it, if you're going to screw it up and you know you are and you've been in this situation before and then you start going, oh, I always screw this up. I always screw this up. Step away from it. Start your routine again. 
Take the mental mulligan. It doesn't count on your scorecard. No one's going to hold it against you. And your playing partners will have a good laugh about you taking a mental mulligan, and then you won't feel pressured like you're slowing everybody down. You like exactly. I had a I had a, a client once tell me, you know, I've always done my best when I have a do over shot. Right. A lot of golfers do that. <laughs> do over. Right. Yeah. You miss it. How, about, how many times you get there? You have a four foot putt. You miss it. You, you grab it. You rake it back. And then just totally casually, you just it's like it's the right. easiest putt in the world. It goes right in. Right. Right. You you can pretend on your first putt, that it is a do-over. That's what I advocate practicing. Interesting. It's no different. When you get in touch with that part of your mind that can do that, (laughs) you can put yourself in that feeling state, in that belief state on your first putt because you have it within you, right? If you're able to do it in reality, the, the nervous system and brain does not know the difference between imagined reality and what we call reality. There's no difference. When you get that down, you can practice in your mind. You can do things without ever stepping foot on a golf course. And all these things can come to fruition in like a big mass, mass, uh, oh, what's the word? Oh, when the nuclear explosion, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm losing it here. Black hole? No, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, when everything <laughs> comes together for you, that's what I meant by that. Okay. And it'll all just come together, all these hundred little tips and getting in touch with their unconscious, being master of your emotions. And, you know, I'm, I, I must get this out here before uh, we go. The centerpiece of everything I teach is the pre-shot routine. Now, yes, everybody knows you need to do a pre-shot routine. But I teach that it must be done with purpose and intention. And part of that intention is to trigger the unconscious feel. Awesome. Uh, a great message. Thank you very much. Well, we didn't get a ten- chance to uh, talk more about your website. Can you give us a quick overview of what you have at break80golf.com? Yes. Thank you, Fred. At Break 80 Golf, I have, well, first of all, if you go there, you can get a free book, How to Solve Your Golf Problems. You get another book, uh, which is why you can improve without practice. And I can spend another hour just talking about that alone. Well, you'll Maybe come s- back. We'll yeah. back. Okay, Absolutely. great. I gave you some tips along those lines. Um, sometimes I get a little woo-woo on folks, but for the most part, I'm very grounded because I, I come from a, um, the corporate world. I was a corporate manager. Um, I'm all about, hmm, let's cut through the BS. Let's get right down to the heart and, and, and soul of how we can get where we want to get as fast and efficiently as possible. And everything about my site is about that. I, I've got... Uh, articles from uh, golf gurus, uh, Gary Player, Arnold Palmer, Sam Snead, uh, a lot of the greats from the 20th century. I've collected a lot of their information and put it out in article form. I have my own articles. I have a whole section of articles from a golf psychologist by the name of Tom Kubistant, um, techniques on Every aspect of the game, uh, from chipping to dr- a lot of driving distance articles, people seem to like those. But <laughs> I don't know why. I like to say it's not about how far, it's about how close. That is absolutely true. <laughs> when you're playing golf. Now, I-, I will admit, though, I'll admit, Fred, sometimes I go out there where I really don't give a rip about my score. And I go, you know what? I'm just going to blast today. I'm going to swing like the wind, and I'm just going to have fun ripping the ball. Because let's face it, that is fun. Yep. But I go out understanding that this is not the best way for me to score. And I enjoy it on that given day because that's how I set my outcome. You know what? I'm just going to go for everything with my driver. Nice. And I might even have a couple beers in this round. So, yeah. But re- but I realize that I'm not doing this to score today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I might get You got to know that going into it too. That's right. You can't have it all. You can't go out there, drink a bunch of beers and and play like a wild man, no strategy, and expect to have your best score. Right, right. But it's certainly, hey, you can really love the game that way. And that's what it's about. Get out there, smile, have fun. This is everything that goes into whatever I do. Fun. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, uh, on the blog at golfsmarter.com, I'll put links to uh, Craig's site so that you can get his free downloads there and his uh, ebook. Craig Sigal, 
of break80golf.com. That was very entertaining and a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on to Golf Smarter today. Thank you, Fred. It was a pleasure. Anytime. I'd love to come back. Okay. Uh, what one? Give us one parting thought. The parting thought. You have everything within you to get to the score, and your swing is good enough. Stop going for the perfect swing. The object of the game is to keep it in play, hit it straight, and your swing is good enough. If you've hit a good shot with each of your clubs, and I know you have, then you have the information stored in your body's intelligence to do it again and again and again. It's just tapping in, baby. (laughs) 